Hello and welcome again to the Get Sustainable show produced by ESPN in partnership with Green Europe Today and Livestream Studio. Our guest today is Pavo Beres, a business unit manager for Dell Technologies, multinational technology giant in personal computers, servers, computer software, computer and network security, as well as information security services. Pavo, true pleasure to have you on today. And thank you for having me here today. It's a very important topic, so a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you very much. Technology is often seen as our potential savior in the fight against uh, climate change. However, many would argue that what we really should be doing is reducing our dependency on technology and moving to more traditional, less energy intensive and sustainable ways of living. When is technology the sol solution and when is it part of the problem? I think you touched upon a few things in that question. Well, first of all, I must say personally, I think we can't live without technology. If you look around, well, we're surrounded by it. Yeah. So if we want to function the way we do and we want to make this progress as sustainable as possible, we have to use this technology. There is no go getting around it, but there are two cases. One is of course overconsumption. Yeah. Uh, there is honestly, there is no need to change the smartphone, smartwatch, TV, car, every single year, every month, uh, because it's just wasteful to the economy. So we should be thinking more of long term, we should be thinking about recycling, we should be thinking about the circular economy. So this is one thing which is a habit that we have and we need to change for it to be more sustainable. But then again, if we look at it, uh, we want to use less paper, for example. So if we want to use less paper, it needs to be electronic. Mm -hmm. If it needs to be electronic, it has to use new technologies. For example, blockchain, which we use yeah. at banks. We use it uh, to consume what the banks offer us. We use it to communicate with our office. We use it to consume ads. Uh, we use it to consume uh, digital media. So this is a benefit because we don't waste so much paper. The second thing, transportation, for example, we want to travel less, but we still want to meet. We still want to meet, uh, maybe not in person, but we want to see the other person. We want to talk, we want to do business, and we want to do business over the continent. We want yeah. to do it in different countries, in different cities. How are we supposed to do it without technology? Absolutely. So we still need to communicate over some form of media. So basically this comes down to two things. It's applications, and infrastructure. So applications, applications is business functions. And those business functions can basically be implemented in a sustainable way, and they can be implemented in a non-sustainable way, like everything. So if you consider sitting on a social media app for four or five hours a day, Many don't know, but we're contributing to the carbon footprint. Why? Because it's cookies, it's ads, it's uh, digital media, it's everything that circles all around the world. It circles on servers, on routers, all of this uses energy, all of this creates this whole chaos. So, of course, some apps are cloud native and they don't consume as much, but some from our PC, they bounce back to a server in another country to our PC and back again. That's not really sustainable. So when it comes to the question regarding technology, I think that honestly, we can't live without this technology. It's just a matter of how we use it properly and more sustainably. Yeah, um, a key point you touched on was overconsumption. I think you're absolutely right, is that we gotta be careful where we apply technology because technology can be uh, very important in, in, uh, in, some, in overcoming some of the challenges we're facing, but it can also be a contributor to uh, to the bad habits that, that uh, we're all trying to uh, um, get away from in, in a way. Um, a lot of your work, I imagine, is in the field of the Internet of Things, automation, big data, all of which require ever more increasing server capacity and what this entails, stable and secure energy sources. How has this space over, uh, evolved over time and what innovations are happening at present in this field? Well, me personally, I, I like automation very much. So even my uh, house is automated. So basically lights, heating, even appliances in the house are already automated, which means that when I'm not home, like right now, the temperature is automatically lowered. The lights are off, the appliances are off, so they don't consume the energy. Mm. When I come back, the house already knows I'll be coming back. So they turn up, for example, the heating, it turns on the lightning, uh, lightning. I, of lights, course, yeah. lights, yes, exactly. I, of course, use, uh, 
uh, LED bulbs. Yeah. So they've been on for the past eight years and I haven't exchanged them yet. Okay. So this is very, very sustainable. But, you know, IoT has changed many things in our lives, which we see or which we don't see. First of all, it gave us visibility into supply chains. It gave us visibility into the shop floor on factories, the energy consumptions, how our machines run, and how basically everything around us works, which gives us insights. Mm -hmm. Those insights let us make better decisions. So first of all, we know which parts, not only of our warehouses, of our offices, of our robots, of everything needs maintenance at which time, which also conserves energy, it conserves time, and time is money in today's world. But uh, first of all, it lets us go ahead and do a better scheduling of this. So we know how much energy in the near future we'll be needing, how much resources we'll be needing. And again, this can be also applied to infrastructure. This doesn't have to be, of course, just the physical world. It can be the virtual world, mm -hmm. the infrastructure that we design. It can run, for example, on a single server workload where we utilize 20% of it. It can be virtualized where we utilize 70, 80%, which is already a saving. We can run it as a cloud environment, which cloud environment automatically tells us that this workload that we're trying to run would be better placed on this machine or in this environment for us to consume less resources, yeah. pay less for it, consume less, less energy. So basically, this is helping us a lot. But you also said big data. Of course, we consider big data as an uh, energy consumer. But again, like with everything, uh, it's, it's a matter of writing the application and using the functions. Because we can use a function, for example, select star, where we search the whole database and we have to go through records and records and records and we'll use a lot of energy, yeah. but we can make this function much more sustainable mm -hmm. and we can just search a small database exactly for what we're looking for. Even the programming languages, uh, it's, it sometimes makes sense to use different ones. Uh, when we use Python versus C, Python is considered to use 50 to 70 times more resources, more energy, then deploying this That's in C. So it all comes down again to how we use it and uh, can we write the code, for example, sustainably yeah. at the moment of doing the whole I, I never imagined that uh, <laughs> we, we, we should be judging our languages by the carbon emissions uh, that, that it generates, but there that's, might be something true. to it. That's true. I know there aren't any easy answers, despite us having to find and implement them quickly, but with a growing population, which is unfortunately becoming ever more unequal and polarized, what can be done to help the disadvantaged not fall behind in the global race for progress and development? Has Dell identified this as a risk factor and is it taking any strategic action to limit such outcomes? Of course. Dell has many ESG strategies that are affecting millions of people worldwide. Uh, we have digital inclusion programs like digital life care, solar community hubs, and student tech crew. Uh, we have, we're delivering recruiting and educational programs to expand our reach to the unrepresented groups, mm -hmm. result, resulting in an increased representation of people who identify as women, who identify as Black African American, Hispanic Latino, in our overall employee base and our leadership group. Uh, we have a very strong focus on research. We design energy efficient products yeah. without sacrificing performance because we know it's just as critical to supporting your goals as yeah. it is to supporting ours. We use advancements in cooling and uh, power management to lower our carbon footprint and optimize uh, the current data centers for more sustainable future. And by leveraging, for example, our supply chain's uh, power, we reduce the waste and cost by providing greater supply chain visibility with near real-time uh, inventory views and performance insights. Uh, we scale the use of our recycled and renewable materials in our products. Even in my laptop, uh, not only 90% of the packaging across our entire product portfolio is made with recycled or renewable materials, but also the laptops. Almost 180 million kilograms of sustainable materials are used in our 
products and packaging. There is over 227,000 kilograms of ocean bound plastic in our packaging. So this allowed us to, uh, to achieve our commitments to actually increasing our annual use of the ocean bound plastic tenfold by wow. s yes, four years ahead of schedule. So basically we already overachieved this. So uh, yeah, congr congratulations on your um, achievements. I had a recent conversation with somebody who said that um, we need to look at these regions as as areas for opportunity and uh, uh, treat treat them as such because there is huge opportunity. If we bring uh, their um, their standard of living up, then out of that will will come new new benefits for for uh, for, the, for everyone. So. Moving on perhaps to changes in working habits and consumer behaviours, online and hybrid solutions have in, in a way become a, um, a lasting legacy of the COVID pandemic. We are now travelling less, uh, we are using less paper, more digital solutions, which is great news for the environment. How has this trend evolved over the past couple of years and how has it changed the business environment you're in? Very much, I would say, very much. Very much. And uh, I, I can't say it was a smooth transition for many, but uh, it's something we got used to. I mean, probably we would be someplace in a conference right now speaking, not, yeah. not really here, but uh, we see this transition everywhere. Everybody is using right now Zoom Teams, WebEx, they're uh, using digital media, but also the whole, let's say, hiring process has changed. Yes. As the, we as Dell, for example, can hire totally remotely. We can hire a person who's sitting on the other side of the world. They will receive straight from the factory a whole package, including the laptop, the monitor, the headset, keyboard, everything. They'll be onboarded through a, a digital workspace and they'll have all the tools necessary for their work ready when they open the laptop. So there is no need to go to IT, to fly someplace, to onboard them personally. They just get a token on their phone. They can start working. And this is a change that's, uh, that we're seeing. Many, many companies right now are adopting the not only remote, but hybrid work policy which is fantastic, especially when you know there are a lot of people who will be stuck in traffic or like today it's snowing yeah. and uh, many people won't be able to go to the office. This digital technology and digital media allowed us to work with the same benefits, with the same everything, efficiency, the same communication with our team, with our customers. It wasn't even possible That's before. Very, very interesting because it, um, everybody thought it was impossible to work pretty much full on remotely until the need ha uh, happens for us to have and to then change. And it turned out it's possible. So, <laughs> with that in mind, anything is possible. I mean, uh, pe people talk about the, the threat of climate change. Um, uh, if we put our mindset to it, that it is possible to stop it and we take action to do it, then I believe that it can be done. Yeah, that's true. Um, my final question concerns your plans for the future in terms of ESG and, and climate action changes and investments. What sectors, markets are you aiming to target as key areas for business growth as well as social progress? Well, I think you already touched on this because for us it's enabling the people to use the technology to live in a much more sustainable way. Well, first and foremost, our commitment is to protecting the planet. Uh, and we mean on reducing our dependency on wasteful, let's say, energy and creating a new, but uh, the new in a sustainable way. So instead, we're trying to reuse as much as possible. That's why Dell Technologies is dedicated to keeping uh, products and materials in circulation longer through repair, recovery, reuse, an approach known as uh, circular economy. We're engaging with stakeholders on matters of public interest as countries, communities, businesses continue to respond to concerns around the environment, social economic challenges as we see today. Uh, we organize, uh, reorganize that both governments and companies have their roles to play mm -hmm. and we need to seek to partner with the public sector on a variety of the issues that evolve. By 2030, for example, for every product that our customer buy, we will reuse or recycle an equivalent product. 100% of our packaging will be made from recycled or renewable material. More than half of our product content will be made from recycled or renewable materials in the future. Uh, we've actually developed a proof of concept in collaboration with Intel. It's called Concept Luna, mm -hmm. which uh, it exactly explores the 
revolutionary design idea that makes components immediately accessible, replaceable, reusable. So it's reducing the resource use and keeping even more in the circular materials in the economy. I don't know if you know, but motherboards, for example, can be one of the most uh, energy intense components to manufacture. So by shrinking the total area of approximately 75%, and the component count by, let's say, 20%, we estimate that the carbon footprint of the motherboard could be re reduced by 50%. Wow. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. It is mind blowing when you when you talk about it. It's all very fascinating, though. Thank you very much. Uh, but that is all we have time for today. Uh, but we must have you again back next year uh, to talk uh, about f all your further work and how it's progressing. So. Uh, now, Pavel already touched on this, but you may have noticed we are expanding our team and looking for talented individuals who will help us even further in our mission to drive sustainability changes in Central and Eastern Europe. So uh, we have an array of exciting opportunities and new projects. So if you are open for this challenge, then we'd love to hear from you. Please send us a, a note to careers at greeneuropetoday.com. Thank you very much for watching us today and see you again soon. Goodbye.